In this lesson, I want to look at two different for loop examples where we stray from the standard of incrementing by one and moving up through some count. In the first example, we're going to modify or change the modification statement so that we don't just increment by one. And in the second example, we're going to work backwards and count down from a higher number to a lower number. So in this first example, what we're going to do is we're going to display the odd numbers from 1 through 99. So to do that, all we need is a for loop with the loop control variable starting at 1. While it's less than 101, could have said 100 there, but I'll say 101 and say that we're printing 1 through 100 odd. And then right here is the difference. Rather than an increment operator, we need to use a composite assignment operator and write i plus equal 2. So that i will be 1, then 3, then 5, then 7, then 9, and so on. In the body, all we need is just a console write, and we'll have i with a space so that we can easily read the output. And let's run the program. And you see we get 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, dot, 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 95, 97, 99. Also notice that I did not put the for loop body in curly braces. That's because I just had one statement, and one statement doesn't require curly braces. Had I had two or more statements, then I would have had to put curly braces around those for them to all be inside the for loop. But for one statement, you can leave the curly braces off. So this example shows what to do if you need to increment by more than one. Let's comment that out and look at our second example. In this example, we want to work backwards or count down from a high number to a low number. The example I'm going to demonstrate is reversing the contents of a string. So first of all, we need a string. We'll create a variable word and assign it the value hello. Then we need to understand a couple of properties of strings. One property is the length of a string. The length of a string is the number of characters in a string, so hello has five characters, so the length is five. The other thing we need to know is that each character in a string has a position, and the positions are numbered starting at zero, so that the H in hello is at position zero, the E is at position one, and so on, so that the O is at position four. So the length is five, but the position of the last character is 4. And that's going to play a role here in just a second. So to start at the last position, we need to initialize our loop control variable to that. So we're going to write word.length minus 1. The length is 5, but we want to start at position 4, so length minus 1 will get us there. Then we want to loop while i is greater than negative 1, because the last position is 0. So we want i to be 0, but we don't want i to be negative 1. Once that happens, then we're actually to the left of the string. We're out of the string, and that's an error. And then we want to decrement by 1, because we want to go from 4 to 3 to 2 to 1 to 0. So that's our loop. The body just needs to be a console write statement. But we can't just write anything. We have to use a, another function, substring, to pull out one character at a time. So substring takes two arguments, a starting index, which is going to be i, our position in the string, or our current position in the string. And then it takes the length of the number of characters you want to pull out in the substring. In this case, we just want one. We want the current character only, so that we get the o, then the l, then the other l, then the e, then the h. That's all we need to do. So we close it off. Again, we don't need curly braces, because it's one statement only. And we run the program, and we see Hello backwards is O-L-L-E-H. To demonstrate the versatility of our little program, we'll change the length of the string to something a bit longer. This time, hello world. Run it again, and it still works just fine. D-L-R-O-W space O-L-L-E-H. So these two examples demonstrate some other things you can do with a for loop rather than just work from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, or however you're going to count upwards. You can count upwards by increments more than one, or you can work backwards using a decrement. For the next lesson, we're going to talk about some other modifications you can make to the for loop, as in where you place the initialization statement and where you place the modification statement.